Welcome uh, to my studio here in Rotterdam. I'm situated in an old school building where I'm having my own practice for six months now and I'm sharing this studio with two other designers. My name is Laura, I'm uh, from Atelier LVDW. I name myself more a material designer because all the work I do always starts with a material experiment and then uh, I look at the possibilities for a uh, product. I started my uh, research on biomaterials and materials in general um, actually during my studies at Willem de Koning Academy in, uh, also here in Rotterdam. And during my graduation year I did a research on biophilic design which is about implementing uh, elements from nature into interior because biomaterials are also natural material, so how can I implement this into bi biophilic design? That's actually where it started, my fascination. And um, since then I'm working on uh, material development in my studio. I want to show you some of my material. Recently I've been working on the Eggshell Ceramic project, which is now in the exhibition Materialized. And these are those samples which are completely biodegradable. It is made out of uh, discarded eggshells. Um, I have someone in my family having a chicken farm and I could use the eggshells from his company to create new material. So here you see the uh, jute tiles that I made. Those are made from uh, waste fibers from Forbo flooring. And I color those and at the moment I'm doing a research on natural, uh, natural dyes. So the material gets even more sustainable than it is right now. I'm combining the fibers with plaster and then you get these, uh, this kind of look in the material. And I'm um, collaborating with a Dutch design label to produce uh, lampshades out of this material. Another material that I find very interesting is uh, bioresin. It should not be confused as a, some kind of biodegradable material because that, that isn't but it's a resin that's uh, uh, almost 50% made out of natural materials. I also have some samples over here. And it is interesting because it gets super hard, but uh, I noticed that this material cannot stand heat. So I'm, I'm doing some research on this because I think you can make also really beautiful structures with this. So uh, that's something I'm working on. But this, I started this research a while ago and it's something that I, if I have the time, I continue doing this. And um, that is a material that I find interesting. I really like to work with all kinds of materials and also combine organic waste with other kinds of materials. For example, the, the Jutal project, where I combine the organic waste stream with, uh, with a plaster that, yeah, that is used for years, so that I also know that this product is gonna work. So, and then I can, it's easier to create a product that you can sell and, uh, and show those possibilities of sustainability and, and organic waste streams. I get a lot of emails from companies that are interested, but sometimes it's also difficult because uh, for an architect, a new material should be tested and certified. And that is something that is for me as a small studio, still a big step. So um, that's why a lot of my work is just uh, a little smaller. For the future I, I hope to have my uh, completely my own studio which is a bit larger where I can do a uh, more large-scale project so um, I hope this, uh, this, this will be the future. I don't see myself like uh, make, creating a big factory and creating a lot of tiles. I like to create everything myself and maybe with a team but it shouldn't be like a mass-produced thing. Today we are in the Plasticide workshop in uh, Rotterdam. My name is Martin. And my name is Joost. We are focused on producing sheet materials from recycled plastics. We're now in the, in the middle of our, uh, our own space. So we have the workshop container over here. We have a storage container over there. And we are building our office in the container on top. 
We started quite small. We started off by with a very tiny old oil storage space and we uh, purchased an oven. Uh, so I have a few samples in front of me right here. Um, this one is called Chocolate Factory. It's a sheet made up out of uh, old chocolate, chocolate factory molds. The white base of this uh, type of plastic sheet is made from uh, old bucket lids. And the colored chunks are actually from Belgian household waste. And we also have that one with a black base. Um, we also have a black base with a more marbled texture. And then this one is called Blizzard. It's also made from bucket lids and then with some black dots in there. And sometimes we also focus on producing furniture instead of only uh, sheet materials. And that's what you see right here. It's a big table we are now developing for a shop interior. I started designing this table lamp quite a few years ago already. Um, the name of the table lamp kind of tells the story because it's called Prouvé, which is French for found. And the whole design is based upon this found object, and that is a heat sink, which is used in uh, industrial lighting as a cooling element for LEDs. And they are really beautiful parts, but they are always hidden. So I decided to make it the main focus of the design and then it felt right to design something that is um, constructed in a sort of very basic and easy way uh, that makes it very easy also to disassemble it. Uh, so all the choices for finishing also were based on that. So it's anodized, which makes it easy to recycle again. The base is connected to the rod by the electrical wire. And then the shade actually just uh, hangs on the rod by friction. Yeah, which makes it super easy to just take it apart and all. The design on several exhibitions, after which Cohorse, a very new design label from Rotterdam, approached me uh, with the intentions of starting to produce the light. Sometime later now, uh, I have a successful uh, product here, which is super exciting. Cohorse is not the really regular label in that sense, because they focus really on giving artists and designers a, a stage for every part of the process that comes with the light. So in developing the light, the production was not even the main focus. Because for example, the, the packaging, the graphic design, uh, the videos, uh, the, the advertising strategy, everything was done by uh, different artists and designers. Hi, I'm Slaar. Hi, I'm Jordi. And together we're Studio for Baan. We're here today in Rotterdam at our workspace at the Keilerberg. Well, Studio for Baan was started 2019 at the Dutch Design Week. Yeah, you really are, are really the maker. Yeah. And I'm more behind the scenes. So, I mean, the sketching and designing we do together. And, but then uh, all the, fur, the footage, like photography, website and everything uh, I make. So. That's, we combine forces in that way. Studio van Baan makes uh, simple graphics, uh, wooden sculptures, that is between furniture and art. We start always with a 2D uh, sketch, actually, and um, we like to give this perspective uh, to a 3D form, uh, but still, because they're black, they look a kind of uh, give a flat silhouette. They're actually quite sharp with the black uh, lining. Together we create the designs, we sketch them, and you make it like a 3D model in a uh, technical drawing. Yes. And then you make them all by hand uh, in, us, in our new workspace. The kind of materials what we use is most of the time uh, oak or ash. It uh, ebonizes the wood, so it turns black with a chemical reaction. It's not just design, it's art. Well, it's quite hard to see the future now for Studio for Baan, especially during the situation of COVID. Of course, we really started just when uh, COVID-19 came out, so we still we didn't really have a physical exhibition yet. Um, so hopefully, 
next year and when everything is healthy again, uh, it's like a normal life, then we can uh, break through and see the public of the furniture to the public. We hopefully get a market that's more design but also art related because I think we're really looking for the boundary between design and art. We have kind of friction between it. Well, we have a lot of influence of Bauhaus and uh, Memphis Group. Um, they also use quite simple graphic shapes. And uh, when we are designing, it's sometimes we go a little bit too far, so we just leave pieces away to keep them that simple. Yeah. Um, but it yeah. doesn't mean that the simple forms are easy to make. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the easiest shapes are always hard to make. Yeah. And that's always a challenge for us. Especially for you. Especially for me, <laughs> yeah. And I can give you a small tour. So let's go. Over 50 studios are here. Like a metal workplace. Everybody has your own spots. You have your own uh, square meters and you can build how high you want. Just like my own studio, we have a working place upstairs and downstairs we have a building place. 